Do you know friends that project managers are highly skilled professionals who guide projects from planning phase to successful completion. They work closely with stakeholders and internal team members to ensure that projects are completed on time and within budget. Their expertise is invaluable across various fields including software development, finance, healthcare and many more. The role of a project manager is not only crucial but it is also highly rewarding. According to LinkedIn, the median annual wage for project management specialist in the United States is around $135 and $466, while in India, it is around 17 LPA. Sounds so good. This career offers both diversity in job opportunities and substantial financial benefits, making it an attractive choice for many professionals. With that guys, I welcome you all in today's video on project management in software engineering. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before I move on, just a quick info, guys Simply Learn has got a PMP certification training in collaboration with the Project Management Institute. It includes PMP exam pass guaranteed on the first attempt, exclusive masterclass in generative AI for project management, 35 PDUs, 12 simulation assessments, 500 plus premium questions, 1000 question banks and many more. So what are you doing now? Hurry up and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So guys, before we move on, let us discuss our agenda for today's session. So we are going to begin our session with understanding the project management. Moving ahead, we are going to discuss about project management activities in software development. Then we are going to have a deep discussion on 5 variables in project control. Moving ahead, we are also going to discuss about phases or tasks involved in software engineering projects. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with discussion on benefits of using phases in project. So guys, let us start with understanding the project management. So guys, project management is a discipline of defining and achieving targets while optimizing the use of resources like time, money, people, materials, energy, space, etc. over the course of project, which means a set of activities of finite duration. That's the actual definition of project management. And with that, I hope so, you have got a brief idea regarding what exactly is project management. Now, we are going to move forward and try to understand what are the project management activities involved in software engineering. So guys, project management activities encompasses wide range of tasks aimed at ensuring that software projects are completed successfully. These activities are generally grouped into the following phases. The first one is initiation. In this phase, it includes project charter development, where you have to create a formal document that outlines the project objectives, stakeholders, and initial scope. Then it includes the stakeholders identification, where you have to recognize all the parties affected by the project and understand their needs and expectations. After math, we have the next phase, which is the planning. It includes scope, where you have to clearly define what is and what is not included in the project. Under its umbrella, next comes the scheduling part where you have to create a detailed project timeline including milestones and deliverable. Moving ahead, we have the resource planning in this domain where you have to determine what resources means the people, tools, materials are needed and it also includes the budgeting where you have to estimate the cost of project and planning for the budget. Next comes the risk management. So under the planning, we have the risk management planning where you have to identify potential risk and developing mitigation strategies and finally have under its umbrella the communication planning where you have to establish how information will be communicated among the stakeholders. The third phase that we are going to study about is known as execution. So guys, it includes team formation, developments, which mean assembling the project team and fostering team development. Then comes task assignment, where you have to assign tasks to team members based on their skills and project requirements. Next come under it is a quality assurance, where you have to implement the processes to ensure that software meets the required standards. 
Next comes under it is stakeholder engagement, where you have to keep stakeholders informed and involved throughout the project. Moving ahead, we have the fourth phase, that is monitoring and controlling. So guys, progress tracking, where you have to regularly monitor project's progress against the plan. Under it, we have the performance reporting, where you have to provide updates on the project status, including any issues or risk. Under it, we have the next, that is change management, where you have to manage the changes in the project scope, schedule, and resources. Then, we have the quality control under this, and it includes conducting regular checks and testing to ensure deliverables meet the required quality standards. And finally, we have the monitoring part where it means keeping an eye on the identified risks and looking out for new risks. And finally, we move to our last phase, that is the closure. So guys, closure includes the final deliverables, where you have to complete and deliver the final product to the client. Moving ahead, we have the project documentation under its part, where you have to compile all the project documents for future reference. Then you have to do the post-project review, where you have to conduct a review to identify lessons learned and areas or improvement. Then we have the stakeholder satisfaction, where you have to ensure all the stakeholders are satisfied with the project outcomes. And finally, you have release under this umbrella, where you have to release project team members to their next assignments. So guys, these activities help structure the work of project managers and teams, ensuring that software projects are completed efficiently and effectively with clear documentation and communication at every stage. Now let us move on and discuss about five variables of project control in software engineering. Project control in software engineering revolves around monitoring and managing key variables to ensure that the project stays on track. These variables include the five variables of project control in software engineering. Effective project control in software engineering involves monitoring and managing key variables to ensure project stays on track and meets its objective. So let us delve into these five crucial variables. The first one that we have is scope. So guys, a scope encompasses all the work required to deliver a product, service, or result with the specified features and functions. It's essentially the project boundaries and deliverables. It includes two parameters, that is controls and tools. If we talk about control, it means that to maintain control over the scope. It's vital to ensure that the project remains within the agreed upon boundaries. This involves managing any changes through a formal change control process to prevent scope creep, which can derail the project by introducing unplanned tasks. Next, we have on this umbrella, the tools used. So the common tools for scope control includes the work breakdown structure, which breaks the project into manageable sections and requirements documentation to outline what needs to be done and change requests from to manage and approve any alterations to the project scope. Next, we have all over here is time. Time refers to the project schedule, which includes the start and the end dates, key milestones and deadlines. It's about when things need to happen. If you talk about control, guys, it means keeping the project on schedule. It requires regular monitoring of progress against timeline. Adjustments to the schedule might be necessary to address delays or to accelerate certain tasks if needed. Here, tools used are such as Gantt charts, provide a visual timeline of project activities, project schedules, lays out the sequence and timing of tasks, Critical path analysis identifies the longest sequence of tasks that must be completed on time for the project to finish on schedule. And project management softwares used are like Jira, Microsoft Project, which helps in planning, executing, monitoring, and scheduling. Now let us move to the third part, that is cost. Cost involves the budget allocated for the project, covering all the expenses such as labor, materials, equipments, and overhead. If we talk about the control parameter in this, it includes tracking project expenditures against budget and making adjustments as necessary. This might involve implementing the cost saving measures or managing changes to the budget. Here tools used are cost estimation models, which helps to predict expenses, budget tracking spreadsheets, and provide a way to monitor costs and earn value management, which also integrates project scope, cost, and schedule measures 
to help assess the project performance and progress. The fourth one that we are going to talk about is quality. Quality refers to the degree to which the project deliverables meet the required standards and satisfy the customer needs. It's about delivering a product that performs as expected as the needs of stakeholders and expectations. It involves adhering to the established quality standards through systematic testing, reviews and inspections. We have to also address any defects or issues promptly which is very crucial for maintaining the quality. Tools used are such as quality assurance plans which outlines the activities required to ensure quality testing frameworks which provide a structure for systematic testing, inspection checklist which helps in verifying that all the quality requirements are met and quality control charts also monitor quality performance. And finally, we move to our last, that is the risk. Risk encompasses the potential events or conditions that could negatively impact the project. This could range from technical failures to resource shortages. Effective risk controls involves identifying, analyzing and prioritizing risk. Developing and implementing mitigation strategies is very, very crucial to manage these risks proactively. If we talk about tools for risk control, it includes risk registers to document and track risk. Risk assessment matrices helps to evaluate the severity and likelihood of risk. We also do the SWOT analysis to identify strengths, weaknesses and opportunities and also threats and contingency plans to outline steps to take if risk materializes. So guys, by keeping a firm grip on these five variables like scope, time, cost, quality and risk, project managers can navigate the complexities of software engineering projects and drive them to successful completion. Now, since we have got a brief idea regarding what are the variables in project control, let us move to our next task, where we are going to discuss the phases or tasks which are involved in software engineering projects. In software engineering, managing project often involves breaking down into manageable phases or tasks. This structured approach ensures clarity, organization and control throughout the project life cycle. Each phase is characterized by specific criteria and deliverables, which play a crucial role in project success. The first one that we are going to discuss is about entry criteria. Entry criteria are the conditions that must be met before a phase or task can begin. In software engineering, entry criteria ensures that all necessary preparation and prerequisites are completed before the starting phase. This can include the required resources, approvals and documentations in place. Next one that we have all over here is exit criteria. Exit criteria ensures that a phase has met its objectives and produced the expected deliverables before moving on to the next phase. In software development, exit criteria for the coding phase might include the completed code, pass unit tests and code reviews. This helps to prevent incomplete or substandard work from being passed along to the subsequent phases. Next we have all over here is deliverables. Deliverables are the tangible or intangible outputs produced at the end of a phase. Deliverables serves as a milestone and indicates a progress within project. In software engineering, common deliverables include requirement specification, design documents, source codes, test plans and user manuals. Clear deliverables help in measuring progress and quality, ensuring that each phase contributes to the overall project goals. Next one we have all over here is called reports. Reports are the documents that provide information on the status, progress and outcomes of phase or task. Regular reporting keeps stakeholders informed and allows for tracking and assessing project performance. In software engineering, reports might include status updates, risk assessment, issue logs and performance matrices. Effective reporting helps in identifying and addressing issues early, ensuring transparency and accountability throughout the project. Now, let us discuss what are the benefits of these phases. So guys, in context of software engineering, breaking a project into phases or tasks with defined criteria and deliverables offers several benefits. The first one that we get is structured approach. It provides a clear and structured approach to project management, ensuring that each phase has clear objectives and outputs. Next, we have the risk management. Here, the entry and exit criteria helps in identifying and mitigating risk early by ensuring that prerequisites are met and quality standards are maintained. And finally, we have all over here is quality assurance. 
where a clear exit criteria ensures that each phase produces high quality outputs contributing to the overall quality of the final product. So guys, by breaking a software engineering project into these well-defined phases with clear entry and exit criteria, resource allocation, deliverables, and reporting mechanisms, the project managers can effectively guide their teams to deliver high quality software on time and within budget. With that guys, we have come to the end of this tutorial. And if you like this tutorial, please like, share and comment. And if you have got any doubts, then comment down in the comment section. Till then, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.